Hi there and welcome to the Heritage Home Place. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about horse harnesses and then about horse-drawn vehicles and implements. Now there were many, many types of harnesses in use in the 19th century and still in use today. But basically we're going to divide harnesses into two types. One is the breast collar harness which has a a length of leather around the animal's chest and this is used for light work and then the neck collar harness which is used for heavier work and it has the padded neck collar around the animal's neck and hames which are metal or wooden pieces that the harness is attached to and the padding the padded collar rests on the animal's shoulder blades and allows it to do heavier work because the animal can really put its weight into the collar without cutting off any breathing. Now let's look at some of the basic parts of any harness. The traces are the long pieces of leather that connect the animal's collar to the wagon. The breeching with the crupper is the part in the back around the animal's bottom. Harnesses have a saddle and a belly band, which is kind of like a, a girth to hold the harness on. Of course, the harness has the collar and hames. Harnesses have a bridle that usually has blinders, which are also called blinkers or winkers, and these simply prevent the horse from seeing behind it. They don't hurt the horse. They don't touch the horse's eye but they just prevent the horse from seeing behind it because a horse thinks something coming behind it may be trying to chase it and hurt it. And uh, some horses don't do very well without the blinders. Some do. Some can, can pull without the blinders on. The bridle also has a bit. And the reins on a harness are often called lines. Of course, they're a lot longer than the reins you would normally use while riding. And if you've read Black Beauty, you know about the check rein, which in the 19th century was used to hold the horse's heads abnormally high and sometimes hurt the horses. But the check rein doesn't have to be adjusted this high. This is a side check in this illustration. Now let's look at some of the vehicles and implements used in the 19th century. Just as we have a lot of different kinds of cars and trucks, people in the past had a lot of different vehicles too. Let's look at some of the parts on some of these horse-drawn vehicles that you may hear about. This little cart here is called a shay. But let's look at the wooden shafts that come forward. Uh, those attached to the horse's harness, as you can see in this illustration and they help the horse turn the wagon. Now shafts are used when one horse is pulling a wagon or buggy. When you have a team of two or more, uh, there's a wooden tongue, a thicker wooden uh, pole that goes between the horses, and that's what's used. It's a slightly different arrangement. The horse's traces, the long pieces of leather along the horse's sides, attached to the single tree, which is attached to the wagon. And as the horse's shoulders move as it walks and trots along, the single tree moves too, and this prevents the horse's collar from rubbing it as quite as much. If you have a team, you may also have a double tree attached to two single trees. And this helps even out some of the some of the extra weight, maybe one horse may be pulling slightly more than the other, and you can adjust these to where the horses are pulling evenly. Now let's turn and look at some different vehicles. Two-wheeled vehicles included carts, gigs, handsome cabs, and chaise, and other, other types of carts by different names, such as governess carts and dog carts. You probably know the handsome cab from Black Beauty. Uh, what's interesting about it is that the driver sat in the back. Many families kept a buggy for their own use, and a buggy is a four-wheeled vehicle. Now, one of the hard things about studying 19th century vehicles is sometimes the same type of vehicle might be called by different names in different areas. Um, but you're probably familiar with what's often called the doctor's buggy. Um, these could be actually different things. 
but another type of buggy that was commonly used at the time was a Surrey. Some people differentiate buggies from carriages by saying that a buggy was driven by the owner whereas the carriage was driven by a professional coachman. There were many types of carriages. They tended to represent a, an upper middle class or high level family. Um, some of these were Phaetons like the Victoria here and the Vis-a-Vis. -vis. Ladies and gentlemen had different types of carriages that were popular for them. Now a coach is a slightly heavier vehicle often used for public use or by a state official or a noble person. Stage coaches are a good example of a coach. There were also many types of vehicles that ran on, on skids or sleds, um, different types of sleighs. A cutter is a little sleigh for two people. A stone boat is just uh, basically a little sled that can be pulled over the ground. They could put heavy things like rocks or wood on it. Bob sleds carried loads as well. Wagons were the pickup trucks of the 19th century. Some had beds and some didn't. There were all kinds of little market wagons and buckboards. Conestoga wagons were heavy powerhouses. They had to be pulled by a, a heavy team of horses. And then the regular farm wagons that a farmer would keep to carry his goods to market. As for implements, probably the most common was the, the single plow. Of course, there were many types of plows. Some had more than one plow share. Uh, the sulky plows had a seat for the farmer to ride on. And along with the plows, there were many different types of cultivators uh, that the farmer could use to, to plow up or cultivate his crop. There were also horse-drawn uh, threshers, uh, mowers, and hay rakes. So the farmer could do all types of work with his horses. I hope you've enjoyed our lesson today about harness and different types of horse-drawn vehicles and maybe be interested enough to research it yourself or even think about take up driving. So now we're going to turn Miss Jessie toward home. I'm going to give the reins over to Sarah and let her take Miss Jessie down the road.